had been going to MGH and the doctor kept calling it white matter disease. And, and the last time I saw him, he put his arm around me and he said, I wish I could tell you things will get better, but they won't, you know. He said I'd give him about three years. Well, John died about three years and ten months later. When I came here, I joined the caregiver group. It happens, you know, you just deal with it. And uh, um, it was slow. And he never, he never lost himself totally, you know. Uh, COPT took him before that time, which was a blessing. He'd have the TV on, and, uh, and I could tell he, he wasn't watching the TV. I said, John, what are you thinking about when you watch the TV? I, I don't think you're really following the program. It was very sad, because he said, nothing. There's nothing there, Jerry. And this was a man who was the go-to guy. If you wanted to know anything about something, he had it all up here. And then to see him go down like that, it was sad. People are not dying. With, uh, people are living with a serious illness. That's what you have to get into your mindset. You know, years ago I was a home health aide for hospice. I think I brought them some comfort, and uh, I had a couple of older guys that had cancer, and uh, I loved to garden, so I always brought them flowers from my garden, and, and I could see how it cheered them up. And it's, one old guy said, I never had a woman give me flowers before, you know, cute. And uh, it's part of life. John and I were very, um, it's life. See, I lost my mother at 14, and before that, she received the last rites of the Catholic Church 22 times. Raised in that environment, you know that you're born and you eventually die. Somebody said to me, Jerry, you, you did a great job. You know, how, how did you do that all the time? And, you know, I mean, I was pushing them around in the wheelchair, and people would always say, hi, John, and... And I'd say, John, I know you can't talk, but wave, you know, and uh, uh, he would, you know. I was trying to get him to interact. You know. He was um, very, very quiet, you know. I mean, he was a man of few words, but he grew up, uh, his father died when he was 11. His mother had to go to work. So we, we didn't have any roles, you know. He would clean the house, change the diapers, you know. We would get together as women and go away for the weekend or something, you know. And um, one of them would, a couple of them would say, well, I'd have to ask my husband. Well, I could never relate to that. <laughs> I would just say, John, I'm going away this weekend. You're it for the kids. And that was fine. A little bit shy, but he was also very active. He believed in giving back, you know. He... He was on the Braintree uh, zoning board, the capital planning. We had some men friends, you know, uh, guys that he knew. He was a town meeting member. So they'll come and visit, and they'd say, uh, John, you're looking good. And the, the doctors also. Oh, John, you're doing good. And he'd always say, he'd point to me. He uh -huh. said, she makes me good. You, know, so you just do it, you know? If you overanalyze things, you can create havoc in your life.